When building a hi-fi system, there are many areas which will affect the overall sound quality of that system. Obviously your speaker and amplifier tend to be the most important, but there are many areas which affect the overall sound, and in this video today, I thought I'd talk about probably one of the most overlooked aspects of any system, and that is the mains power, which is feeding your equipment. So, in general, like many things in hi-fi, there are kind of two sides to this debate. You have the people who believe that mains power make a difference, and then you have the people who don't believe mains power makes a difference. And I thought I'd make this video just to kind of maybe persuade the people who perhaps are on the fence or you know don't believe that the mains does make a difference in the hi-fi system, because in my experience, it most definitely does. So this is not gonna be an overly technical video. I'm not, you know, an audio engineer myself or anyone who kind of knows the sort of more technical side of things. I'm just someone who is an audiophile and, you know, loves listening to a good hi-fi system. So what I'm going to be doing as well um, throughout this video is actually recommend you guys a few products from this shop here based in the UK. This video is not sponsored uh, or anything like that. This is just a shop which I personally buy uh, mains products from and I do think that you guys will like. So I've talked about power cables on the channel before and how important they actually are to a system but there's actually something which in my opinion is even more important and that is the mains block which is actually feeding your equipment now if you're using one of those cheap plastic kind of diy store or supermarket store style power strips you're going to want to go out and replace that as soon as possible since that is significantly weighing down the performance of your system and the reason for this i've explained this on the channel before is down to rfi and emi interference in your home so, you know, think interference from your TV, your laptop, your smartphone, and that kind of thing. And this essentially, this interference gets into the power strip and creates noise, which is then transferred over to your equipment. So we really don't want that because we want to keep the power as clean as possible in our system to ensure that our equipment performs at its absolute best. So what to aim for in a power strip and what should you be concerned about? Well, I would aim for one with an aluminium uh, style casing. Aluminium is much more efficient at keeping away that RFI and EMI interference and will ensure that your sound is more stable and noise free. I would also try and find one perhaps where the lead is attached since this will lead to a more natural sound, a bit more free flowing and a bit more effortless. This is not necessarily you know, a necessity, but um, definitely try and look for one with the lead attached. The one I'm using in my system is from a shop here in the UK called MCRU. It's their number 75 power strip. This video is not sponsored by them or anything like that. I just really like this particular one and I've been using it in my system for a while. You could also opt for perhaps aiming for a power strip which is star wired. This, according to some companies, does bring some benefits. I haven't personally you know, tested around loads of different power strips to find out for myself but you could experiment with that and find out what works best for you. A good power strip will provide a solid foundation for any hi-fi system. However, there are other areas you need to address. And my next point is for audio files who are looking to build a digital audio system, and that is to replace the stock switch mode power supply is typically bundled with PCs as well as network streamers. You see, even though these switch mode power supplies are pretty good for everyday items in our home, they're not really suitable for audio applications since they create distortion in the high frequencies. When you switch over to a linear power supply, you'll notice how much cleaner the top end is, with a more open and expressive soundstage, as well as more micro detail being revealed in the mix. I would suggest starting with a more affordable one and, you know, seeing how that affects your system. You can always upgrade to a more expensive one at a later date. What I will say with linear power supplies and, you know, putting them on your source is that the difference might not be immediate at first unless you have trained ears or have a lot of experience in this hobby. Nevertheless though, even if you are new to the hobby, you will start to appreciate the differences over time and will notice that your system is overall less fatiguing to listen to. The third and final part of today's video is gonna focus on filtering and how you can implement it in your system. Now, the power block I mentioned earlier does have filtering inside of it, but you can always benefit from more. So what I suggest doing is purchasing the plug which they actually sell on their website which plugs into the wall socket which is next to the power strip. I'm not too kind of sure on what it does exactly since I'm not an expert in that field but essentially it cleans up the incoming main signal and you know does help with overall giving a more cleaner signal sent to your power strip. You could of course go out and buy a power conditioner but that's going to cost you quite a bit 
of uh, you know spare change and most people don't tend to have that kind of money lying around so what I suggest doing as I said is going out purchasing this plug and plugging it in next to your power strip and again that would just help with revealing more micro details in the mix a blacker background and just overall a cleaner sound which I do prefer as opposed to you know not having that plug in my system so that's going to do it for today's video guys let me know if you found any other products you know online which you think benefits the mains obviously you could you know really go deep with this stuff you could replace the wall socket you could even get a dedicated circuit breaker and you know get really carried away for it with it but i thought i'd kind of focus on the basics today maybe i'll do a more advanced video in the future we shall wait and see on that but yeah drop a like and subscribe if you did enjoy and let me know as i said what you think in the comments down below and i'll see you in the next video